returning here to Staples Center for tomorrow night's game. Their playoff series now tied at two games apiece after a lopsided loss and a silent player protest. 
Despite losing, the Clippers say their owner's off-court controversy was not a factor. Just like every other game. It really was. That's, that's not, that's not, you know, sugarcoating anything. But before this game, there was a silent protest. Players dumping their warm-ups on center court, revealing inside-out shirts, concealing the Clippers' logo. This all comes after TMZ Sports posted what it says is an audio recording of a conversation between Clippers owner Donald Sterling and his then-girlfriend V. Stibiano. NBC News cannot verify the recording, but according to TMZ, Sterling was upset Stibiano posted this photo with Magic Johnson on her Instagram account. Yeah, it bothers me a lot that you want to broadcast that you're associating with black people. You have to. What would you like to see the league do at this point? I don't know. Uh, I honestly haven't even thought about it. Um, the league's going to do what they need to do. Magic Johnson talked about Sterling during the ABC Sports Countdown show. He shouldn't own a team anymore. And he should stand up and say, I don't want to own a team anymore. In a statement, the Clippers president says it's not clear if the audio is legitimate or has been altered, adding the remarks are the antithesis of who Sterling is. Stibiano's attorney says the audio is legitimate, but that Stibiano did not release the tapes to any news media. As for Sunday's game, Sterling did not attend, but his wife did. Now the playoff series moves to L.A. I'd be lying if I was to say I was nervous, you know, about what it's going to be like because um, our fans have been amazing all season long, and obviously I hope that it'll be the same. Sterling's wife released a statement to TMZ Sports saying, quote, Our family is devastated by the racist comments made by my estranged husband. She says her family does not share those views. The NBA commissioner is promising a quick investigation into this matter. Back to you. All right, Jeff Fryer in Los Angeles. Thank you. Sacramento Mayor Kevin Johnson was a three-time NBA All-Star. He's advising the League's Players Association on how to respond to these alleged remarks. Mayor Johnson, it's nice to see you. How are you doing? Thanks, Matt. Doing well. Uh, and you, you were with Adam uh, Silver over the weekend, the NBA con uh, commissioner. Did he tell you that he believes, in fact, this is Donald Sterling on those tapes? Well, we did. I don't want to get into specifics, but I, I will tell you what was important, that you know, all players feel that these comments were reprehensible and unacceptable. Uh, we called an emergency call with the executive committee and player reps. Players weighed in, and they wanted me to communicate a few important points to the commissioner, which I did. One is they wanted immediate investigation. They want to make sure that those tapes are legitimate, um, due process is deserved. Number two, Mr. Sterling uh, should not be allowed to go to any Clipper play playoff games or participate uh, in the playoffs throughout the duration. Number three, they were very clear that the player's voice has to be front and center. The players don't want to be uh, passive participants. They want to make sure they have a seat at the table. Number four, they want swift right. and decisive action. And then, and then lastly, they want to make sure that the maximum sanction that Adam Silver, our commissioner, can do uh, that is allowable under the bylaws is what he does. All right, well, so again, if this is Mr. Sterling on that tape, do you want to see him stripped of his ownership can the league do that can they force him out or do they simply treat him like such a pariah that he's, he has no other choice but to give up the team I think it's a good question, and from a player standpoint, one, we want to make sure, and I want to be clear, whatever the maximum that's allowable is what we want the commissioner to impose. If that allows him to force a sale of an owner, if it allows him to determine whether the fitness of this person uh, is intact and something in question, if it doesn't allow the commissioner to take those acts, it is very clear that all of our players in the league want to explore the option. I mean, I ask you, Matt, what player exactly would want to play for this owner. Yeah, how could he ever go into a player's meeting? How could he attend a game ever again? Let me ask you, though, Mr. Mayor, there's another side to this. Donald Sterling has a track record here. According to the New York Times, they wrote that he has an outrageous and public track record of anti-black behavior. There have been some public and legal battles over this in the past. The league knew about this, but he was a rich guy who owned a team. They turned their cheek. They turned their back. Does the league bear some responsibility then for some of the headlines that are now exploding? One of the questions that the players wanted me to convey to Commissioner Silver was, if he has such a history and a track record of doing things that were improper and that don't, do not represent the league, why were there not sanctions and consequences in the past? Well, and that's one of the get. questions that we have. Uh, 
He said, you know, absolutely, it's a fair question. And he said, you know, going forward, he wants to make sure that he acts swiftly and decisively. He's got to be forceful on this. And quite honestly, you know, Matt, it's a very good question. And we believe as players, there's got to be a two-way accountability. Players want to be held accountable to a high standard of conduct. Right. Certainly owners need to be held at, to a high standard of conduct. As an African-American well. and a former player, are you confident the league will distinguish itself in this situation? It's a defining moment in the history of this league, and I am very confident that the commissioner will act in the best interest of the players, the owners, and the league, and I feel like the only way to do that is to do the most severe sanctions possible, and I, I do expect him to do that in, in short order. Sacramento Mayor Kevin Johnson. Mr. Mayor, it's always nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to have more from the Orange Room on this story in a second. It's a big story. And what did you think about that? been telling you i've been telling you world y'all hate my black skin you hate that i am a black man the world hates us black people we just caught this sap slipping but it's a whole lot of y'all out there in big big mainstream america that y'all feel the same way he just was stupid he was pulling his heart out to his girl well, how you think this is making me feel? My black woman don't even respect me. Because we don't do nothing about nothing like this. What, what, what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? i tell you what I would do. If I was one of them L.A. Clippers and I was a black man, and my owner said what he said, I wouldn't be playing tonight. Fuck you not coming to the game. You just ain't coming to the game because your ass getting mobbed. Don't play nobody stupid. You don't have to come to the game. I can sit in my $40 million mansion and watch these black niggas do what I want them to do. And that's get out there, bounce that ball, drop that pill, and get me that revenue. And hurry up and get me my chips with dip. And speaking of chips with dip, listen what my man Snoop had to say. Tell him, Snoop. A message to the motherfucker that owned the Clippers. You bitch-ass, redneck, white bread, chicken shit motherfucker. Fuck you, your mama, and everything connected to you, you racist piece of shit. Fuck you. Now, here's another story. Cliven Bunny. Check this old farmer out. This is one I was talking about the other day on my show. Alright? I told you about his racist comments. Dig what he had to say. Check it. A Nevada rancher, cattle rancher, became a hero to anti-government conservatives for resisting an attempt to remove his cattle from federal land. Then he made some startling comments, and while some of his top supporters are now distancing themselves, that rancher is not backing down. Here's NBC's Mike Taibbi. Cliven Bundy is not apologizing, instead repeating his controversial comments about race on Thursday. They seem to be slaves to, to, to the welfare system. Just two weeks ago, Bundy became a new hero to many anti-government conservatives. It's time to take those guns away from these bureaucrats. Bundy called it a range war, and with hundreds of armed supporters coming to his aid, it seemed that way when government agents gave up in their attempt to seize his cattle that had been grazing on federal lands, even though he owes more than a million in grazing fees and fines. I don't recognize the United States government as, as, as even existing. This week, the right's new darling talked about race. I want to tell you one more thing I know about the Negro. Comments now gone viral about African Americans he says he saw outside an urban housing project. And I've often wondered, now are they better off as slaves, picking cotton, having family life and doing things, or are they better off under government subsidy? The fallout has been swift. The distance from hero to pariah traveled at the speed of the internet, starting with some of Bundy's major supporters. Senator Rand Paul called the comments racist and offensive. Nevada Senator Dean Heller called them appalling. Even Sean Hannity, among several conservative Fox News commentators who championed Bundy's cause, expressed disgust. I believe those comments are downright racist. They are repugnant. 
Las Vegas Review Journal reporter Keith Rogers, who's followed Bundy's case for years, says the rancher has one logical move. I think Cliven has to look inside himself, and he might be a bigger man by, by saying, I'm sorry. The dispute isn't over about grazing his cattle without paying fees, but Bundy's role as an unqualified anti-government hero is disappearing fast. For today, Mike Taibbi, NBC News, Los Angeles.